Alright, let's see what we got here. Nice. Sink coming out of there, that's good. The switches on these scopes begin to get really ugly after a while. Normal thing to do. I haven't cleaned this scope up yet. What I've been doing is replacing it with 1480s, which is the later version. Much, much better. But it's not original, of course. Alright. Alright, let's see what we got. Alright, this is... Got to have a sink generator. And let's see. Fire up the head. Sounds good. No funny noises. We can go to the scopes. and see if the head's up to speed. Or we can look at the tone wheel error on a picture monitor, like that. And you can see the thing come up. And that, that's a velocity lock. That's the first stage in servos in these machines, is to make sure that the speed of the drum matches your vertical reference. The lines are. Okay. And we'll just give it a shot. Let's see what we got. And, um, when there's control track, that well, there it goes. That's locked up horizontal lock. And so we got frequency lock, we got phase lock. And if there's any audio on this, we will hear it. We need those thinking digital meters, huh? Oh yeah, no <laughs> audio yet. The D mod output, proc amp. One thing is you can see every stage in the machine. I guess there was so many things that could go wrong with it. You've got so many processes in cascade. So the first thing you can see is video input, demodulator, monochrome time-based corrector, color time-based corrector, and proc amp. There, so, there you go. Let's see here. Uh, where the audio is. Should be audio on. Uh -huh. The other thing that's neat is that the servos had all these different modes of operation. So if you had trouble with a tape, you could throw the thing into what's called tone wheel. Tone wheels are very loose, as you can see, it's a loose lock. It just does, again, it just does a rough lock of the head drum and the servo to the incoming sink. And you'll get a display like that. So the output of the machine isn't, of course, stabilized at all. But that's the amount of jitter. Now you, could, you know how much jitter comes up in elliptical scan machines. If you look on an externally locked monitor, that's what comes up the quad. Pretty, that's how good quad is. Good, yeah. yeah, out of the out of the gate raw. Okay, then the next position is called well, switch lock. It had to be, right? It's... Well that you could you could run that on, I mean there's a you know you yeah. run that onto a monitor and you can look at that and it'll lock the TV set, but that didn't meet FCC specs. You really couldn't broadcast right. that. So the next thing, switch lock, it's a vertical component, it'll frame the picture to match that. Now what you, what, what you can do with switch lock is you can switch it. So if you've got a video switcher, you do a cut, it'll, it'll work. Oh, you no get problems. Your clean, yeah. Right. And then the next thing up, of course, is uh, there's also a thing called line lock. So if you've got a tape that's got trouble with the control track, you throw it in line lock, it'll lock the picture horizontally, but it'll ignore any disturbances vertical. Hmm. So what'll happen, because the machine takes quite a while, and you've got this huge honking quarter horsepower motor, sitting behind this shaft here, a big motor, and of course you get disturbance, vertical disturbance, that motor's got to, all that inertia, that motor has to catch up with where the video should be, so it's moving the tape faster or slower, and it could take five, six seconds before the thing's reframed again. If you put it in color frame mode, it could take 10 seconds. This machine did, by the way, understand color framing. Wow. Yeah. What's, the, what's the year on this one? And TR60, mobile 70s. Yeah, it's early. Yeah. And this was uh, the, the, the early version of these machines called the TR3 and 4. They sold this thing by itself as a player. Mm -hmm. I have one. And they sold, then if you bought the, this electronic sidecar, it was called a 4. And then the next generation was called a 50. And that was a high banded one. And this one is a 60. And this one, this one has basically uh, all of the modern electronics they, to drop out compensator, velocity corrector, chroma amplitude corrector. You know, Vistas in the preamp, uh, very, very, very quiet, very nice. They got rid of the germanium transistors and the big tube they used to use for the front end. Uh, so uh, that's that. Okay, so, and then Pix Lock is completely fully locked, and there's actually even color on there. Uh, I haven't messed with anything, but I can probably fix the chroma phase by messing with it. Uh, that's uh, not bad.
considering how old the tape is. And if I mess with this, I can make it look really good. This, this machine, if you, if you finesse this machine, it's as good as any quad ever made, even the AVR ones. Although, David Crawford would argue with me. And what model is this it's again? TR60. And there was one last vertical quad made by RCA, it was called a TR61. The only difference in the 61 is, first it was painted brown, and down here, this is the servo tray. In the 61, this is a pull-out, all, uh, all uh, integrated circuit. And plus, this motor was converted to a DC motor with very, almost no inertia, so the thing will lock up in about a second or so. Very fast lock up. The, the TR70C right. was the same as the, as the 61. Right. And the 70B was the same as this. I, I have a B and a C out the trailer, so. Okay. You showed me a good time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, this, this works very nice. Yeah, the big problem is machines, dirty connectors, dirty switches. Uh, the circuitry is very, I mean, it's all, both of it's germanium transistors, believe it or not, but they're very, the, the people who designed this machine knew their stuff. Now, the guy who did the servos of this machine was a guy named uh, Ken Louth, L-O-U-T-H. Does that sound familiar? Louth Automation, Harris Automation. They're the biggest seller of broadcast automation in the world. Ken Louth started that company we left RCA. Kenny did the servos in this machine, and from what these people had to work with, with the gain transfer of these things, the HFV of these transistors, uh, it's amazing how well they work. Really, really good job. Yeah. I, I did very little to this. I have one in the back I'll show you, which was in a chicken coop in Maryland for 10 years with water coming in and everything. I actually restored it. I got it running pretty well.